Hello, here's an update to our miniature AC power grid system we began working on last summer, in the summer of 2014. Back then, we started by building a half a dozen generator stations. I'll show one of them to you here. It's up there mounted on that wood board. It's basically a three-phase Delco Rigby truck alternator that's belt-driven by a variable speed motor. We're using this to generate three-phase power at low voltage and low current. So when it's uh, pumping up power, the line voltage is somewhere around 140 volts AC, and the maximum current we get out in a dead shorted fault is about 2 amps. So not a whole lot of power we're talking about here. At full load, we can get somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 watts out of it. That's about it. What we want to do this summer is we want to link these six generator stations together using a pair of substations. So that's what we built. Here's one of our substations here. We call it the Nooksack substation. Nooksack is a local uh, Native American tribe in our area. We tried to choose names that were reflective of our lo local uh, culture and geography. So our generators are named things like Baker and Bellingdale and Sasquatch and Diablo. So that's where the names came from. We had students pick them as they saw fit. This is our Nooksack substation. As you can tell from the single line diagram, the Nooksack substation ties together three of our generators we built last summer, ties them together on a single bus through individual single breakers. Each generator has its own circuit breaker as well, but these breakers here are in the substation. Then we have a pair of breakers here tying to transmission lines to our next substation, which is located over there. We call this the Stevens substation, different panel. Basically the same layout. We've got a selection of manual switches. We can trip and close breakers. And it is also reflected on the single line diagram. Breakers one through five. It's a single bus layout, so three generators with their own circuit breakers tie with uh, connecting lines to the substation here. So what we're doing with the system is we're able to tie six generators together, synchronize them all with each other, and at present we don't have any permanent loads wired in. So really it's just a big system for synchronizing a bunch of generators. But our purpose in doing this was to demonstrate protective relaying and to be able to wire up protection for our substation zones and for our generators. Last summer in 2014, we equipped every generator with an overcurrent relay, a 50-51 overcurrent relay, which is about the simplest protection you can have. This summer, we equipped each of the substations with differential current protection on the bus, which basically means we're monitoring all the current going in and out of that common bus, and if there's a difference in current, for example, if we have current coming in that's not reflected coming out, we know we have some sort of fault within the bus, and that differential relay will trip. And what we do there, we can see above here are our circuit breakers. We have five of these circuit breakers. We had to build these breakers ourselves using 10 by 10 enclosures. Inside of each enclosure is a three-phase power contactor like you might use to start a motor. And we have some relay circuitry wired up to it so it acts as a latching circuit breaker. Each breaker has a green light and a red light on the front. In keeping with the standard color convention for substations, green is off. Green is tripped, red is on, it means danger. It may sound kind of backwards. We often think of green as being go and red as being stop. But in the power industry, green means off, safe, open. Red means on, energized, closed. We can demonstrate how the breakers work. I've got my five handles down here. I can close each breaker. And as we look up to the circuit breakers up there, you can see the lights change color, changing states. So now all five breakers are closed. Currently, none of my generators are running, so it really doesn't matter what I do with the breakers in the state. I don't have to worry about uh, sequencing with anything else. I just want to demonstrate how we can trip and close each one. We also wanted to demonstrate how we can control this remotely via computer. So we set up a programmable logic controller inside of every substation, and we have the PLC connected through a small touch screen. Now, our original plan was to have a very large touch screen connected to this to control both substations remotely, but we had a problem with one with that touch screen, so we had to go with our backup plan, which is this. So right now at the Stevens substation, I can access any of these five circuit breakers. I'll go to circuit breaker number two, and I want to say I want to remotely close it. So I'll hit the close button, and sure enough, our breaker goes from green to red, and we are closed. I can put, push the trip button here, and I just tripped the breaker remotely. So that's in what we call the SCADA mode, 
for the computer control mode. You can see here, every breaker control is manual, plus it has a local or SCADA selector. If I take it out of SCADA mode and go to local, now this does not work. Now I only have local control over the breaker. I cannot remotely close or trip it. So for example, if the substation operator believed that we had a network problem or perhaps a security issue was compromised, he or she could switch all of the breakers into local mode, and that way the breakers can only be closed or tripped locally from the substation. But in SCADA mode, we're able to do it, uh, select individually which breaker we want to have uh, control over, and then do it through the PLC. These PLCs may be networked, and so our eventual plan is to network them together on a common network where we can open and close breakers from any place in the room. Also, one of the features of our substation was we want to make it as realistic as possible for protection. So we have a set of CT test switches for every circuit breaker. Pull one of the covers off. It's a brand new States brand CT test switch. States was generous enough to offer us an educational discount on these. So every circuit breaker we constructed has six CTs, six current transformers, three line and three load. And this CT test switch assembly allows us to break open that CT circuit for doing maintenance and also to take a CT test stab and insert there to measure current. They are shorting switches, so when you open the switch, it actually shorts the CT for safety, so you're not going to cause an actual open circuit within the CT. You simply open the wiring that goes to the protective relay. Every substation is equipped with a bank of protective relays. Excuse me. This summer, we are only using one. We only wired up one, the 87 bus differential. In future years, we'll wire up some of these others for doing feeder protection to loads, also for doing transformer differentials when we add transformers next year. So right now, it's a minimally complete substation. We're able to synchronize all six generators together. We're able to demonstrate bus differential protection. We're able to exert manual control over the breakers and SCADA-based computer control over the breakers. Altogether, it's been a fairly large project. We have months of work into this, uh, a lot of the work being done by students as part of their coursework. So it's a, a grand adventure. We just wrapped it up today, and we're pretty happy to show it. We are going to be making a few other videos here demonstrating uh, the capabilities of the system and how we can uh, demonstrate the operation of the 87 bus differential relay. So I hope you enjoy these videos.